Hope everyone is having an amazing Sunday evening. Uh, I am in Pine Top slash Lakeside, Arizona. So uh, I got a little bit of a fire going behind me. It's about 49 degrees up here. And I uh, just wanted to make sure we get started on our new week with some amazing lessons from entrepreneurs that I've counseled and uh, over the past 12 years. Um, first, let me just talk about a little bit kind of where the knowledge of the number one mistake that entrepreneurs make comes from. Um, and as I alluded to, it's I would say it's accumulation of about 12 years of experience counseling entrepreneurs as an attorney, uh, mostly focused in the startup, e-commerce, and early stage phase. Um, and it also comes from the fact that I've personally advised uh, over a thousand entrepreneurs. Um, some of them are serial entrepreneurs. <clears throat> some of them are, um, you know, one hit wonders. Uh, some of them fail miserably. But all in all, uh, I would say that, you know, these are lessons that <clears throat> every single entrepreneur could learn from and most common mistake that every entrepreneur makes. And I would describe that mistake as being associated with the wrong people. I'm going to say that again. And this is generic enough to where it takes many different forms. And I'll break that down for you guys uh, in a second. But the most common mistake entrepreneurs make is they do not associate themselves with the right people. What does that mean? Um, if you are in a partnership, you and maybe it's a corporation or it's a partnership, there's other additional shareholders, maybe there's a board, failing to align yourself or yourselves with the right people. Or if you are a soloist, right, maybe you don't have the right consultants or the right uh, advocates for your business. Or maybe you don't have the right vendors. Or maybe you don't associate with the right suppliers. Right? All of this trickles down to um, who you, in fact, associate with. And so how do we describe uh, the situation where you have the wrong partner? Well, sometimes this doesn't manifest itself uh, in the most obvious of ways. So for example, some of my cl clients come to me you know, five to 10 years into business and they realize that they are married to the wrong business partner, right? Metaphorically married, not literally married, but um, they sign documents with people that are just toxic for their business. And it's too far down the road for them to do anything about it, or at least that's what it feels like. Um, and oftentimes it's a question of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, sometimes it's pre-revenue. Sometimes it's millions of dollars. Um, so the number one mistake, again, for those of you who are just tuning in, is associating yourself with the wrong partners or the wrong associates. So I'm going to give you a few examples here just from my recent experience and some things that are on my desk. Of course, changing the facts uh, to protect my clients. But I have a client who is in the professional services industry. Uh, this client uh, started this business, which is in the, the medical world very, very, very early on. This client is um, a serial entrepreneur, but struggles to realize uh, his or her own weaknesses. And so with a great concept, this, this client of mine launched into this business, had an amazing amount of success immediately uh, out of school and decided that, you know, I need the right partners to grow this business. Well, what's my weakness? My weakness is the financial backing and the financial understanding, a CFO type. And so this client of mine decided to bring in a Wall Street type personality. Uh, what do you know about Wall Street type of personalities? They are sharks. They're quite literally the people who don't care about you, don't care about your feelings. Their number one concern is money. Their number one concern is return on investment. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. Uh, in this case, it turned out to be a mixed bag of nuts. Um, so my client, after two to three years of being associated with this uh, newfound CFO type of personality realized very quickly um, and two to three years is pretty quick in the business world that the toxicity was destroying the business toxicity between the two co-founders um, today they are a an eight-figure business 
Uh, unfortunately, they have spent seven figures in disputes, in litigation. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty. How do you avoid such a thing? Well, let's get down to brass tacks. What were some of the problems? As, a, as an owner, as a founder, you want people who have skills that are complementary to yours. So if you are the person who's amazing at marketing, you are great at getting the word out of your business, you are great with the concepts, you are great with uh, developing a plan and, and putting the plan into motion, but you are a bad technician, meaning you don't have the technical skills to scale your business. Well, then you want somebody who has those technical skills, regardless of their personality, with one very big footnote. Personalities can clash. So are you a dominant type of personality? Are you the type of person on the other side of the spectrum? Maybe you're more agreeable to certain things than um, your business partner or your colleagues or associate or consultant. People who are more agreeable to issues in, in disputes tend to take a back seat. And that doesn't mean that's a bad thing necessarily. But people who are um, very, very dominant alpha personalities, as we describe it, people who it's their thought, it's their way. There is no uh, opportunity for other people to voice their concerns. Those types of personalities lock heads very, very quickly. So you, of course, want to take in technical skill set, but that's not enough. You also need to consider the personality or personality gaps. And so one of the things that I would highly recommend um, when you're at the point of picking, again, this could take the form of a business partner. This could be the form of a consultant or an associate, um, perhaps an outside firm, marketing firm, um, is how similar are you in skill sets? So you should be very different in skill sets from the person you're partnering with. And how similar are you in personality where it matters, right? And again, personality, we tend to think, oh, well, I'm, I'm an introvert. So let me get someone that's extrovert. Not necessarily. What brings partners together in the most productive way is values. So you have to have uh, business associates or partners or consultants, co-founders, etc. associates, as I've used the word generically, who have the same values that you do. So if you value hard work and you value um, the get in the trenches and do what it takes mentality, you want to surround yourself by business partners who share that mentality. And unfortunately, one of the most common problems in early stage companies, again, early stage being from year zero to year five or even year 10, is people don't surround themselves with those who have the same values. And in business, we make uh, the analogy to a marital relationship, right? Or significant other relationship. Just think about that. If your significant other doesn't have the same values that you do, it doesn't matter how attracted you are to them. At some point, it becomes toxic. It becomes untenable. Um, you're not able to scale and, and move the business forward in the way, your, your personal business in the way you'd like because you don't have the same values. You don't assess weight to things equally. And having business partners that have the same values as you is critical. So again, the number one mistake that I see in entrepreneurs, um, and I've personally counseled over a thousand of them in the 12 years that I've been practicing law, is failing to pick the right partners or associates. And that includes consultants, that includes employees, key employees, executive employees, uh, but of course, partners and investors. Um, another common scenario is you accept somebody's money thinking that, well, somebody's 100000 or a million dollars are just as good as um, another person's million dollars. And I always like to think back to those episodes of Shark Tank that I, I used to watch. And you'll hear these investors tell uh, the sharks, like Mark Cuban, um, yeah, I have the money. It's not about the money. It's we want the right partner. And they're willing to give up some equity to get the right partner. And that's exactly how you should think in your business. Not every dollar is the same. It, it has different value when it comes from the right person, the right partner. Um, on the tech side, another great example. Everybody promises deliverables. Everybody promises that they have the right set of skills. And then when it comes down to it, very few actually end up launching their technology because they're so weighed down by the lack of tenacity, the lack of um, where the rubber meets the road, the practical skill that it takes to actually pull something off from a technological standpoint, whether it's coding or engineering, uh, hardware development, um, 
it's very easy to get caught up in conceptual types of partners, people that can draw it out on a whiteboard but can't implement it. Um, and this is one of the reasons why projects sometimes take twice to three times as much money, uh, two to three times the amount of time, and they just don't move. In hindsight, again, when we look back, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. we discover that you just didn't partner with the right consultant or the right uh, actual equity partner. You should have brought in somebody who has a track record, who's pulled these things off. Uh, and that's why when you see at the higher levels of business, people who've launched multiple businesses, the serial entrepreneurs, people who have um, you know, taken companies public or multiple companies public, they have this tenacity that is almost uh, to some of us who aren't used to being uh, in the driver's seat or in the front passenger street seat, they have this tenacity that is almost makes you uncomfortable. This, I don't care, we're going to do it and, and t do what needs to be done and whatever it takes mentality. Um, and that can be uh, very intimidating. So just think about where you want to be in a year or two or three with that particular partner. And then you'll realize the value they bring. Yes, this person is tenacious. This person has the vision. They can execute. But they also have the same values. They're honest, for example. Uh, I hate to say it this way, but honesty goes a long way in business. Uh, it's, it's just one of those age-old principles, honesty, integrity. Um, if you have business partners, very common, unfortunately, um, nowadays, but it's always been a problem is your business partner taking more than they're entitled to. Uh, if you have the same value, that is, look, I don't even buy lunch on my company's dime unless I'm going to reimburse it, right? When you have that kind of value system, it goes a long way. So once again, just to, just to recap, pick a partner, and I use the word partner uh, in the very generic way. It could be an associate, an executive level employee, a consultant, or a little, literal uh, business partner, or it could be an equity holder. Someone who has the same values that you do, number one. Number two, somebody with the right technical skill set. It should be complementary to yours, right? And to use the example of, of technology companies, if you can code, maybe you want somebody who can not just code, but can actually think through the problems and see the bigger picture. Or maybe you want somebody who can code in different languages than you, then can build off of what you built. Uh, if you are a great marketer, you're a great personality, you're good, you're good at shaking hands and building credibility with people and investors, great. You need somebody who can actually put the wheels into motion and actually develop your project. Surround yourself with those kinds of people. And here's the great news about picking business partners. You can have a little bit of a dance and a little bit of a courting period without locking things in. And so this is where some legal strategy comes in. You can execute an LOI. You can do um, you know, actual partnership agreement. Again, depending on what the relationship is, maybe it's a shareholder agreement, founder's agreement, co-founder's agreement. There's a million different ways you can dice this. But the point is you've developed some sort of legal roadmap that allows you to get out without having to give up the shirt on your back and your house and your food. Uh, and the horror stories go on and on and on. So bottom line, takeaway from today's live, number one mistake entrepreneurs make is getting into partnerships with the wrong people. And there is a lot of social science to back this up. It's not all about law and putting things into a contract. There's a lot of social science that talks uh, about the person knowing what kind of personality you have, you know, knowing how you react when things get difficult. Imagine for a minute, you know, you don't have enough money to even pay your bills, right? Most early stage companies, they founders aren't paying themselves. Do you really want a founder who's taking employees out to lunch uh, every single day and buying all these extravagant gifts for quote unquote referral sources? No, you don't. You want somebody who can actually say, I will spend money out of my pocket to make this happen. Uh, I'm dedicated and I'm not going to take a salary if I don't need to, right? So anyway, I know we covered a lot uh, in a very short period of time. We're going to post this. Uh, we'll probably post this on our YouTube channel as well as uh, on Instagram. If you have questions about any of these things, um, please let us know. One thing I should say before I go, uh, there are many ways, many, many ways to skin a cat, as they say. There are many ways to document um, the legal relationships uh, in simple ways and also more complicated ways, um, everything from, like I mentioned, a letter of intent all the way to more complicated documents where uh, equity can be ratcheted back. You have vesting schedules. You have clear, distinct milestones. 
Um, and we'll talk about this later in another live, but again, one of the biggest mistakes I see that kind of ties into this mistake of partnering with the wrong people is giving up too much equity, or even if it's not equity, too much cash. Um, I just see it time and time and again, and it's usually because the founder has not looked at their value systems or what they value as carefully as they should have. And they were either insecure or they were just blatantly incorrect about a business decision. And they thought they could make up with that, make up for that decision by uh, just giving up equity and bringing in the wrong person. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, send us your comments and questions and we're happy to get them answered. Until next time, 